guys, it's Cameron from the Mighty Blues. Welcome back today to the channel. Welcome back to the game preview for Burnley versus Everton on Boxing Day. A massive three points needed for the Blues. A massive performance needed by Marco Silva's men after a really poor, disappointing result against Spurs and Manchester City. Nine goals conceded in the last two games in the Premier League and that is unacceptable. A big, big win needed at Turf Moor against Burnley on Boxing Day. We'll be talking about it today. We'll be giving my predicted start in 11. We'll be giving my tactic preview sort of thoughts as well and how I believe Marco Silva should set up for this game because this is a vital three points. Just firstly, I think, you know, after two really poor performances in the Premier League, two really poor results um, in, in Spurs and Manchester City, I think this is a vital three points. Burnley aren't doing fantastic either. They have struggled lately, so I think they'll be willing, um, they'll be rearing for it, and that they're due a win as well, but as are Everton, and we really need to make sure we get this win. Now, we've got a load of games to play over the next couple of weeks. We've got Burnley away, we've got Brighton away, we've got Leicester at home on New Year's Day as well, so it's important that we pick up as many points as possible, especially after the monstrosity of a result on Sunday against Spurs. For me, nine points are needed in the next three games. I think it's just as simple as that. We need to make sure we are beating these teams that are below us, and we need to make sure we're beating teams like Burnley who are in a relegation battle, but we'll go on to talk about that in today's video. So I'll jump straight into my predicted start and 11. I've gone for Jordan Pickford in goal. Now, Jordan Pickford made quite a bad mistake against Spurs for their first goal. He come out and him and Kurt Zuma had a little bit of a miscommunication, knocked into each other and, you know, and, and Son ended up putting the ball in the back of the net. For me, it was a mistake by Jordan Pickford. I think the communication between him himself and Kurt Zuma was poor. He should have just emptied the ball. He shouldn't have been that far off his line at all. Kurt Zuma had more than enough time and more than enough space to, to get that ball out and to, to do what he needed to it. But, you know, Jordan Pickford for come out and, and was cocky again and, and it didn't work off again a little bit like the Merseyside derby a little bit reminiscent of that for me Jordan Pickford he just needs to be t taken down a couple of notches I think he probably is getting a little bit too overconfident now in his own ability and he needs to just be able to sit back and, and do the do the easy simple tasks first and then anything else that's a little bit more complicated you know go after that because he is a fantastic goalkeeper let's be honest he's absolutely quality and he's been quality for Everton since he's signed for us he's made some really important saves and he's, he's kept us in a lot of games but I think he is getting a little bit overconfident now and you're seeing that in the mistake against Liverpool you're seeing it in the mistake against uh, Spurs as well but there's no other keeper that will come in I don't think Martin Stecklenberg is anywhere near good enough and Jao Virginia is definitely not ready so Jordan Pickford starts for me I've gone for Lucas Dean at left back I've gone for the centre back partnership of Kurt Zuma and Yeri Mina with Seamus Coleman at right back now before we talk about the two centre backs I want to talk briefly about Seamus Coleman I spoke about it in the preview to the Spurs game, I said how, you know, I don't think Seamus Coleman has been in fantastic form this season. I think the uh, the fact that he was taken off against Manchester City and Kurt Zuma was put at right back shows that. I think, again, he had a poor game against Spurs. I think he was he was torn apart by Son on that right-hand side. And I think, you know, it, it's getting to the point now where it's, it's, it's not long before we need to replace Seamus Coleman. It's not long before we bring in another right back and it's not long before Seamus Coleman starts to be faded out of the team a little bit like Leighton Baines has. But at the minute, that is impossible because we haven't got we haven't brought in another right back we haven't got anybody to rival Seamus Coleman I know John Joe Kenny's there and I like John Joe Kenny but I just don't think he's ready yet and I don't think he is at the level that we need to take us forward and there's no point in bringing Seamus Coleman out and replacing him with somebody that isn't at that level I think obviously there's rumours going around about, about Wan-Bissaka from um, Crystal Palace the young right back he has been absolutely fantastic this season there's other right backs getting banded about as well but for me at the minute while we've, we've got Seamus and while we haven't signed a new right back we're still uh, obviously we're, we're a week or so away from the January transfer window now so Seamus Coleman does start for me he will take the captain's armband as well he has taken that a lot this season he is he is our captain let's be honest you know Leighton Baines isn't going to be getting into the squad much because of how well Lucas Dean's been playing Phil J. Yelka is probably the fifth choice centre half so Seamus Coleman is the captain and while it isn't anybody to rival him for that position anybody that can take us to the next level Seamus Coleman will start the game for me despite some some really poor performances in recent weeks I've gone for the centre-back partnership of Yeri Mina and Kurt Zuma. I think Kurt Zuma played 
okay against Tottenham. I don't think he was fantastic. He wasn't the worst player on the pitch. Don't get me wrong. I think he played okay against Chris, uh, against Manchester City as well. Sorry. I've gone for Yeri Mina next to him. Now, Michael Keane for me was really poor against Spurs. And Yeri Mina was taken out of the team due to being poor against Manchester City. Michael Keane was uh, kept in. He kept his place. And I think for me, he was quite poor against um, Spurs. And don't get me wrong. I'm not taking Michael Keane out of this squad because, you know, I, I want to say, okay, you've been poor. You're coming out. You're not good enough. I I think there's a lot of games to be played over the next couple of weeks and it's really important that Marco Silva utilises a squad. Now saying that, I think we need to keep with it with a, a, a two centre-backs uh, partnership. We need to maintain that centre-back partnership and we need to stop chopping and changing it because it's not helping Keane, it's not helping Mina and it's not helping Zuma at all. But having said that, like I said, we've got a lot of games to be played and Yeri Mina, I dare say, was taken out of, of the squad for the um, Spurs game more so because you know he, he's rested and he's going to be playing a lot over the next couple of weeks rather than being dropped because of his performance against Manchester City but for me Yeri Mina comes back in again very similar treatment to Michael Keane I'm taking Michael Keane out for just a brief rest you know he's played a lot of football this season he's, he's had a little injury this season as well to his head and obviously he was struggling last season through injury so I'm going to take Michael Keane out and put Yeri Mina in hopefully they can create an absolutely wonderful defensive partnership one that we were certainly looking forward to when we signed both players in the summer but going into the midfield now I've gone for a change of formation now there's one reason I've done this, and that is because I'm believing Adrissa Garnagay is still out injured. Garnagay missed the game against Manchester City and the Spurs game as well through an injury. Now, there's a little bit of news on Adrissa Garnagay. We'll talk about that in just a second as well. But for me, if Adrissa Garnagay is fit, I think the Spurs and the Manchester City game have proven that, you know, we can't just shoehorn a Tom Davis into the squad. We can't just shoehorn a Morgan Snyderlin into the squad. We need to change it up a bit, and we maybe need to change the formation to a 4-4-2 to allow two Sykers and maybe Gilfie Sigurdsson and Andre Gomez to play in that centre midfield positions because I don't think um, Tom Davis does the job that Adrissa Garnagay does, and I don't think Morgan Snyderlin does that job either. So we'll touch on the news regarding Adrissa Garnagay briefly. He is being rumoured to be uh, on the move to Paris Saint-Germain in January. Apparently Paris Saint-Germain are currently in talks with Adrissa Garnagay's representatives. Having said that, they only do have £18 million to spend in the January transfer window due to financial fair play. So I don't think we'll see Adrissa Garnagay leave in January. It'll be interesting to hear all your thoughts and comments on that. Please do leave them in the comment section down below. Very interested to hear what you guys think of, of that. I don't think we'll sell Adrissa Garnagay. I think the last couple of games have proved that he is absolutely vital to our squad and we need him in this team and we need him fit very quickly and I especially don't think we'll sell him for £18 million because let's be honest in this day and age £18 million can get you nothing and I don't think we'd sell one of our one of our key players for that. Don't get me wrong I don't think Garnagay has been absolutely breathtaking this season. I think in a couple of games he's been poor and I think his passing has been off in a couple of games but we've, we've shown we've seen now in the last two games specifically obviously against Spurs and uh, Manchester City leaking nine goals in them two games has shown just how important a Garner Gay is to Everton and just how vital he is to that midfield so I don't think we'll let him go absolutely not but while he is out injured I've gone for Andre Gomez and Gilfie Sigurdsson in the centre of midfield now Andre Gomez did limp off he uh, was taken off sorry uh, in, in the Tottenham game due to a slight knock he was brought he was brought off and Morgan Snyderland was replaced we haven't heard any more on that we haven't heard any more updates on, on the injury to Andre Gomez we don't know whether it's a serious or we don't know whether it was just a precautionary measure to bring him off but hopefully if he is fit he will be in the starting 11 for me I think he'll be in a lot of your guys' starting 11s as well but we'll have to see what Marco Silva has to say in the pre-game press conference to the Burnley game to see if, if Andre Gomez is available of course Gilfie Sigurdsson next to him I don't think Gilfie Sigurdsson was fantastic against Tottenham I'm going to be honest obviously he got the goal he got the second goal and I think it was a very good goal Gilfie Sigurdsson has seemed a little bit isolated and he seemed a little bit like he doesn't know where he's going he doesn't know where to pass the ball he doesn't know what to do with himself nevertheless we know what Gilfie Sigurdsson can give us and he is definitely a starter for me in this game so we're going to the wings now I've gone for Bernard on the left hand side and Adimola Luckman on the right hand side and we'll talk briefly about Bernard for me Bernard needs to come back in I think very similar to the Yeri Mina situation I think he was rested for the Spurs game I think he was brought out because he's played a lot of games recently you know fitness is an issue he still isn't fully fit he's not used to playing the amount of games that he's playing and he's not used to playing the, the game 
games as intense as he's playing in the Premier League. So I think Bernard will come back in. I think he provides us a very, very, very good attacking presence and definitely one that we will need against the Burnley side that haven't got a lot of confidence now. They are struggling. They're currently sitting in 18th position in the Premier League. So it's important that we have our best attackers on the pitch and the best players to, to you know, be able to break into the Burnley area and get in between their defence and create chances for the two strikers. So I've gone for Adam Ola Luckman on the right. Now this is the big one for me. Adam Ola Luckman wasn't even in the 18 against Tottenham Hotspur. He wasn't in the in the starting 11. He wasn't on the bench and I'm unsure of the reason for this. We did do the uh, review to the Tottenham Hotspur game and one of the guys in the live comments said that he, he picked up a slight injury before the game. I'm not too sure about that. That might be it might be true. If it is, I hope uh, Adam Ola Luckman is fit for for the game on Boxing Day because he really does deserve a start for me. Look, Theo Walcott come in and he played okay against Spurs. He obviously got the goal. He got the goal that he really, really needed. He really needed that goal for his own confidence. But I just don't think Theo is, is playing well enough at the minute to be playing inconsistently week in, week out. Sorry, and I think it will do him well as well to get a rest. And if I've had him all look as fifth for me, this is the perfect opportunity to get him in. Give him a, a good run of form now. I, Give him a good run of games now between now and the new year and, and hopefully he can, you know, hit the ground running and put in the type of performances that we're used to seeing him put in uh, when he comes off the bench. So Adam Ola Luckman on the right for me. Now I've gone for two strikers, a traditional 4-4-2 formation. Calvert-Lewin, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison play up front for me. Now we'll talk briefly about Richarlison. I don't think he was fantastic against Tottenham Hotspur. I think he was very much in and out the game. He didn't do enough for me. He didn't do anywhere near enough on that left-hand side. And I think for me... He's, he, he, you know what you get with Richarlison, you get a player that likes to run at defenders, you get a player that likes to get himself into the box and likes to shoot, and I think he will be, it will be a lot more beneficial having him playing up front next to a player like Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who's maybe more of an out-and-out -out psyker, maybe more of a psyker that, you know, you're looking to get the ball into him, you know, from wide positions, you're looking to cross the ball into him, he's absolutely fantastic in the air, he showed that again against Spurs with a wrongly disallowed goal. So I think for me, playing Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison up front together will be a good partnership, and certainly some something we haven't seen uh, this season and, and something that, you know, why not try at the minute? We haven't got a striker in. It's not the January transfer window yet. We haven't, you know, got the capacity to bring somebody in that can play that, that striker role on their own. So why not put Richarlison next to Dominic Calvert-Lewin and see how they can do it? I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin played very well for me against Spurs. Obviously, he got the goal against Manchester City. Should have got the goal against Spurs. The header, I think it was wrongly disallowed. I haven't seen the replay, but what from everybody else is saying? They're saying that uh, Davidson Sanchez goes down too, too, um, too easily and it should have stood but I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin is playing well and he's played well in the last couple of games so for me he keeps his space and Richarlison goes next to him so yeah that is my predicted starting 11 let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below let me know your predicted starting 11s as well would you change the formation like I have or would you go with the same formation if it's just a guy and a guy isn't fit and maybe give Tom Davis another go I don't think Tom Davis was awful against Spurs but he definitely wasn't brilliant and he definitely wasn't you know it wasn't a performance that you look at and you think you need to be starting again next week. I think Tom Davis has a lot of pressure on him and, and he does with, with obviously the, the uh, response that he gets from the fans when he comes in but I don't think he was good enough for me to, to keep his place and I think realistically now we do need to be looking at a change of formation if a player like Adissa Garnagay isn't fit to start. So a word on Burnley briefly, like I said they are sitting 18th in the Premier League they are struggling at the minute but they will be looking to bounce back, they'll be looking to bounce back after Christmas and get the three points. They are really in need of a three points as are Everton so it's really important that whoever plays in in the defence, whoever plays at centre-back, whoever comes in in the midfield and whoever plays up front has a fantastic game of football because one thing's for sure, every single player against Spurs were poor and not one of them had the game of their lives and that's really what we needed and that's what we need again against Burnley because Burnley are going to be well up for it, they're going to be at home just after Christmas of course and they're going to want to get that victory so we need to make sure we keep strong defensively we don't leak goals like we have been doing like I said nine goals in the last two games is a disgrace we make sure that we keep defensively strong every ball that comes into the box we deal with we have it out and then when we get them opportunities up front whether it's Calvert-Lewin whether it's Richarlison whether it's Bernard, Sigurdsson, Walcott, Luckman whoever it is they need to be making sure that they're making the most of them chances and putting the ball in the back of the net so for me this is a vital game it's a vital three points needed for Marco Silva 
like I said, the last two games, the last four games, to be honest, have been really, really poor. We haven't had the top, top performance since the derby, and that's worrying. You know, that was the start of December. We've had a really poor month, so hopefully Boxing Day, just after Christmas, hopefully the lads will be in a nice Christmas spirit, and we'll go out and we'll rectify the mistakes that we made against Spurs. Big game needed by Jordan Pickford. He needs to get his confidence back up, and he needs to, you know, just sit back and say, you know what, I made the mistake there again. I'm going to stop trying to be a little bit too cocky. I'm going to stop trying to do too much and I'm just going to do the basics here and you know get through the game hopefully whoever comes in at centre back whether it's Michael Keane keeps his place hopefully he puts in a solid performance and if Yeri Mina comes in hopefully he can return to his form and um, that you know that he really did have when he when he's made his debut against Chelsea and in the other games as well but yeah a massive game for Marco Silva and the Blues a massive three points needed just after Christmas of course we've got a lot of games in such a short period of time and we really need to start picking up points because you know the results against Manchester the City, the results against Tottenham, they're just not good enough, so we really need to be picking up points when we can, and it's important that this starts on Boxing Day against Burnley. So that's going to be it for this preview. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like. Leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. Who would you play? Would you play Adam Ola Luckman if he is fit? Would you give Tom Davis another go? Would you give Calvert-Lewin another go? And would you bring Bernard in? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please put any score predictions down there as well if you have any. Hopefully this will be a big three points for the Blues. This video will be going out on Christmas Eve. I'll have a little thank you video on Christmas Day. Wishing everybody a Merry Christmas. And then of course we'll have the the match reaction on Boxing Day for the Burnley game. Hopefully it's a much more positive one and hopefully it's one where we're saying, right, another, we're three points now, got the three points, let's get back on track and go and get another three points against Leicester and Bright. So thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel. I'll see you tomorrow on Christmas Day for a nice little thank you message from me to you for being all so supportive and, you know, getting it, um, involved with this channel in the live streams, in the comments, uh, on Twitter. So thank you all very, very much for that and then obviously the big game on a uh, boxing day a big three points needed for the blues a big performance needed by marco silva's men and um, listen we really do need to get a three points because to be honest i think this bad run of form really needs to end because we're going to be in trouble if not we're 11th in the premier league and we need to get our arses into gear and, and get this three points on boxing day but anyway thank you very much for watching if you have enjoyed please do leave a like i'll see you soon on the mighty blues i'll be back for my instant match reaction talking about this game obviously on Boxing Day. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon on the Mighty Blues. <laughs>